Hello, Nuggets. Okay, so something interesting just happened. Thought I'd make a video about it. So, uh, Laura and I were looking, uh, we're taking some photographs of an apartment for her mother who's going to be moving to LA for a few weeks, for a few months rather, before she moves to uh, Colorado. So, we were looking at an apartment because they're going to do a short term rent. And on the way back, um, we went to get a bagel. Uh, well, my wife went to get a tuna sandwich. I wasn't going to get anything, but I'm me, so I got a bagel. Uh, anyway, <laughs> as we're walking to the bagel store, we pass a uh, FedEx truck and one of those, like a small U-Haul size, that's not a size, you know, a small FedEx truck, like a transit van. Um, the driver is standing at the passenger side of the door, by the passenger side door, looking through some letters or whatever, and we're walking past him on the sidewalk. So he's here and we're walking like this, right? And in front of us are a couple of black guys, 20... Five, maybe 30 25 to 30 somewhere in there um obviously laborers or workers or construction workers they're in dusty dirty clothes right and on their lunch break or whatever so those guys walk in front of us and as they're walking past the fedex driver he um stopped looking through his mail they walk by him and then he looked back and he watched them Walked past the back of his open truck, right? Just kept watching them, kind of head down like this. And then as they walked around the corner, he went back to looking through his mail. And then we walked by. And I turned around as I walked past his back door, and he wasn't looking at us. He was, wasn't interested in us at all. So he checked them out, and he didn't check us out. And it just struck me as a moment of clarity for me um, about what societal racism is, not systemic racism, racism, because that talks about institutionals, institutionalized racism. I'm talking about the racism within our society, because that guy, he was a white guy, he looked, maybe he was Middle Eastern or ain't like a few generations back or something, but he was just a white guy in his, I would guess, late 50s, early 60s, um, just doing his job, and when the black guys walked by, he had a moment of fear, or he had an assumption, or he thought there was the potential that they were going to steal something. And when myself, my wife and I walked by, he didn't get that. Now, there could be a lot of things here. It could be that he didn't, he didn't feel we were a threat because um, it was a man and a woman together, and at least in my head, I don't think that feels like a criminal couple. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Two young men together does, but a, a man and a woman, I just feel less so. It is possible that's it, but I don't think it is. I think it was uh, society, society programming him a particular way because my first reaction to it was, Jesus Christ, man, imagine being black in this country having to deal with that shit every day. And then I thought about the guy because my instant reaction was like, that fucking guy, whatever, man. Whatever that generation, you know, eventually. And then I thought, wait a sec, would I do that? If I were him, not, not if I were his age and his generation, if I were me, but in that situation, I was, I had, was driving a FedEx truck or it was my car. Let's say it's my car, right? And the trunk's open and I've got whatever, Honestly, a pack of fucking Oreos, <laughs> whatever. I've got something in the back of my car. If a young black man walked by my car, would I be more likely to double check to see whether they took anything from my car versus a young white man? And the truth is, yes, I would. And I think that I've said this before, but it's like it's a bit of an incendiary statement. I feel that we're all racist. I think there isn't such a thing as a non-racist person in the world. However, I think that it is our job and our duty to, to engage our intellect, to supersede those primal feelings we have of fear. And I think that we have that of a different race. And I think we particularly have that when the media and when society constantly tells us that young black men are dangerous. And I don't think it's unusual for anyone to look at that the young black man passing the car twice and to look at them and, th and be have a moment of fear because I think it's bred into us. If I were black, I still think I'd look at them. Do you see what I'm saying here? Well, I, to me, it's like, 
And that was painful to realize that because I think I would look at them and then I would beat myself up about it. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? It's just a guy walking by your fucking car. That poor guy, you're part of the problem. And I would get into this whole guilt feeling about it. But the truth is we are bred to feel that way by this society. Young black men in particular are painted a particular way. Young black women are painted a particular way. And white men also are, prote- are painted a particular way. And white women, right? I'm not talking about the privileged white white privilege thing here. I'm just talking about there is a portrayal that white is safe and black is dangerous. And I think that while your intellect can fight it and, and you, can, you can be more alert and more astute to those those momentary feelings that crop up in you that you then push back and say, that's not reasonable. That's, my, that's me being, that's my brainwashing. That's TV and media and society brainwashing me to think negatively on those people. You can fight that. And that is actually what being an anti-racist is, I think, is fighting those feelings. And maybe there is an enlightened place that I don't know about. Maybe I'm spewing bullshit here and there genuinely are people who just don't see color i think they're fucking lying i do i don't think that's true i think you see color and i think you would have fear and it's our job to get a more balanced society so that we don't program that in children it was programmed in me and my mother wasn't a racist my stepfather isn't a racist my brother no one in my family is racist but I think that underneath that all, they have the same thing going on in the head that I do. And I remember seeing, it might have been a Reddit video, someone linked a video on Reddit, about someone, uh, it was a recording of slaves, of actual slaves, 70 years after they were freed, freed, quote unquote, and they were talking, and the man who was the interviewer was interviewed later on in the 70s, and said that he had a moment where he was talking to a slave and she said to him, I'm paraphrasing terribly here, but she said to him something along the lines of, oh honey, you still got the disease. You're not cured. You still have the disease. Yeah, we do. And that's what this moment today taught me. Fuck man, that's an insight. (laughs) That's what it made me realize. Yeah, we still have the disease. I don't know, I don't have a solution for it by the way. But Rather than just pointing fingers at the FedEx driver and saying, look at that guy, look at that shit, realize you might do the same. Even though you might think you're the kindest, most loving person in the world, you might think, I want justice and equality and a fairness for all. You might go on the Black Lives Matter marches. You might hold the banner up high. You might date, love, marry someone of a different race. You might have all of those kind of things. You might work your ass off, but inside you, you live in a society that programs you to think a certain way. And we haven't broken it yet. And I don't think we can until everyone is alert enough to those warning signals to fight back against them. And right now, we're obviously not there. Some people are boldly racist or, they're, or, they'll, def- or they'll defend it. They'll say, well, you know, black people are more likely to do it. That's why. Uh, anyway. I don't know, I just had that thought. I told it to Laura, and Laura mentioned that, you know, in a similar in a similar vein, there is more homophobia in the gay and lesbian community than there is outside. I don't know if that's true. That's not also what she said. But the point was, there is a tremendous amount of homophobia in the gay and lesbian community because society teaches them that it's wrong, right? Um, but I do feel that that, is lessening. I mean, I'm outside of that community, so maybe I'm an idiot and I don't know, but it feels like we are on the path to solving that, aren't we? We certainly are in places like England. There's still people, you know, who use offensive language. There's still people who are who are homophobic, but I feel that that is, I can feel that dissipating, right? Whereas with the thing with racism is I feel it just being suppressed. I actually feel like it's just being buried a little bit below the surface um, as opposed to being addressed. Anyway, it's a rambling thoughts. So yeah, you're fucking racist. (laughs) Bye. Love you.